Okay, so this video is going to take you through Snell's Law, which is really useful, and I hope you will uh, will like Snell's Law, because it will resolve something that you may have found annoying when you studied refraction before. So here on the board we've got a glass block, and we've got a ray of light going from air into glass, um, and as you know, when light goes from air to glass it slows down and refracts towards the normal like this um, and if this is the angle of incidence here which looks like it's about 45 degrees the angle of refraction is going to be something less than 45 degrees but when you studied refraction um, lower down in the school you just had to guess what this, this angle of refraction here would be there was no way for you to work it out so it's just guesswork Snell's law allows us to calculate that angle um, the angle that the light will refract. So, what is Snell's Law and how do you use it? Well, if you look in the textbook, you will find this formula here, where N is the, I wouldn't write this down by the way, in your notes if you're making notes, N is the refractive index okay i is the angle of incidence which here is 45 r is the angle of refraction now this formula is annoying and it's annoying that they have used it why is it annoying uh, because this formula only works when you are going from air into another substance with refractive index n Okay, so it's quite a limiting formula in that it only works when you're going from air or also a vacuum really uh, into another substance. If you are going from air into another substance, this formula is fine. So in this case here, we're going from air into glass, this formula is fine. But what if you want to go out of the glass into the air? Unfortunately, this formula on the board, which is in the textbook, doesn't work. Um, what if you want to go from glass into water or from water into glass or any other combination of materials unfortunately it doesn't work so it's really annoying that, that this is the version that they've used um, so I would like to use another version if that's alright with you so this is not the version of it w which will appear on the formula sheet but it's a version that makes more sense because we can use it in any situation going from air to glass or from glass to air or from one material to another so it's more useful and it's just slightly different but not that different it's just got an extra letter in it basically the formula I'd like to use for Snell's law is n i sine i equals n r sine r now we've got two refractive indices before we just had n the refractive index of the glass but now we've got ni this is the refractive index of the incident medium the medium we're coming from okay nr is the refractive index of the medium you're going into slightly different formula it's just got one extra letter basically and it's just rearranged slightly differently but it's more useful. To use this formula basically you've got to remember that N equals 1 for a vacuum and air. The refractive index of air is actually 1.0003 I can't remember off the top of my head or something it's a very tiny bit over 1 but it's practically 1. Uh, so <coughs> to use this formula you've just got to remember that the refractive index of air we basically take as one so I'm going to use this formula even though it's not on the formula sheet I think it's just more useful it'll allow us to work out more stuff um, and it's just better so I'm going to use this formula if you want to use the other formula you're welcome to but then you just can't use it when you're going from glass to air it just won't work so um, you've got to use a different a different version okay so let's go how does this whole formula work well we know that this is going to happen. We know that the light is going to refract towards the normal. But we don't know this angle R. I've sketched it in here 
Okay, but the whole point is we want to work it out. How are we going to work it out? Well, we're going to use Snell's law. Snell's law says ni sine i equals nr sine r. What's ni, the refractive index of the incident medium? Okay, we know that n is 1 for air, because I've just told you. So, 1 times sine, I'm going to run out of space here. Let's move that bit of glass over. 1 times sine of 45 degrees equals nr, the refractive index of the refractive medium. Now, you need to know this, and you don't need to memorize these. So, I'm going to tell you that this glass has a refractive index of 1.5. You don't need to memorize numbers like that. You'll always be told them. That is 1.5 sine r where r is the angle of refraction. That's the thing we don't know. So, how do we work this out? Well, if you're not too confident with, you know, algebra-y stuff for now, let's just do this in a simple way. Let's just, you know, work it out. What's 1 times sine 45? Well, 1, I mean, surely I don't need to multiply by 1, but I've done it. 1 times sine 45 equals something. I mean, actually, before you do this, it would be worth checking your calculator is in the right mode. Because if you're going to be using sine or cos or tan or something like that, you want to know whether your calculator is in degrees mode or in radians mode. And I don't know what this one's going to be in. Okay, so let's go back. If I do just a quick check, if I do sine of 90, and if you do sine of 90, basically see what you get. Uh, okay, I've got sine of 90 is something like that, which means I might need to put this into degrees mode. So you want to look for a little deg on your um, on your screen. What have we got here? Blah, 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 blah. Shift setup. How do I get out of this? Shift setup. Here we go, look, input mode, blah, 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 angle. You see that there? I've got rad for radians. Don't want that. I want, oh, no. Don't want radians. I want degrees. How did I get into that thing? Here it is, look. How do I select that? Can I just go deg? Oh, look, I've done it. Excellent. Now I'm in degrees mode. Right, sorry for the, the bit of a waste of time there. Now if I do sine 90, it's 1. Boom. That's what I want it. So, it's worth checking your calculator is in the right mode. Yours should show, unless you've got a massive graphic calculator like this, yours should just so show deg or rad somewhere on the screen. Now everything's set up right. We're in degrees mode. Let's progress. Can I clear all this stuff off? Yeah, I can. Okay. So, what we want to do is 1 times sine 45. What's 1 times sine of 45 degrees. It is 0 0.707. Okay, so 0 0.707 is 1.5 sine r. What are we going to do to find sine r? Sine r is 0 0.707 divided by 1.5, we'll divide both sides by 1.5, what's that? Divided by 1.5 is that 0 0.471. Now, if we know that sine r is that, how do we find r? r is the inverse sine of that, so r equals inverse sine or arc sine or sine to the minus one however you say it in maths 0 0.471 well what is that so i'm going to do shift sine of the answer to the previous thing shift sine so inverse sine of 0 0.471 equals 28.1 degrees very nice. Let's scroll down. So r equals 28.1 degrees. That's it. We've done it. We've used Snell's law to calculate the angle of refraction. We could now use a protractor to accurately draw that. <coughs> 
so that the angle was 28, I'll just call it, round it to 28. It's you're impossible to do 28.1 degrees with a normal protractor. So our angle of refraction would be 28 degrees. There we go. We've used Snell's law to work out the angle of refraction. So what I suggest you do is another example of that. So let's just get another ray here coming in and we'll have it coming in at a different angle let's have it coming in at a bigger angle like that we'll chuck in a normal here and we'll say that the angle of incidence looks like well, let's call it 60 degrees 60 degrees what is the angle of refraction clearly it's going to refract towards the normal there's going to be an angle of refraction r but we can work it out using the formula n i sine i equals n r sine r we will keep it going from air where n is 1 to glass where n is 1.5 and what i recommend you do now is pause the video and churn through that calculation so um, pause it now okay hopefully you've now done the calculation let me just run through it quickly <coughs> and see if we get the same answer so I'm going to do it differently this way because I don't like doing it the way I described before um, I'd rather do a bit of rearrangement first so I'm going to rearrange for sine r because that's halfway to what we want so sine r is going to be n i sine i over n r I'm going to run out of space I just like doing everything in steps like this so then r is going to be inverse sine of all of that Now look, it doesn't matter what order you do this in. As long as you get the right answer, I don't mind. This is just the way I would like to do it. So it's going to be inverse sine of, let's put the numbers in. Ni is the refractive index of the incident medium. That's 1. Sine i is, i is 60 degrees. So sine of 60 degrees divided by nr, the refractive index of the material we're going into, 1.5. So I'm going to put all that in the calculator. Let's give that a try. Let's clear all this out of the way. Clear. So I'm going to do inverse sine of, open some brackets. I'm going to leave out the 1. So it's just going to be sine of 60, whoops, 61. Sine of 60 degrees divided by 1.5. Close the brackets. That looks like the thing there equals 35.2 degrees. We'll call it 35 degrees because as I said we can't do any better than that with our protractor. So this angle here which I have labelled as R we could then measure that and draw it accurately with the protractor as 35 degrees. Hopefully you got that. That's as far as we'll go for this video with Snell's Law. Okay, But obviously we could then use Snell's Law in this format to find out what happens when the ray of light leaves the glass here, okay, uh, which we'll look at in the lesson. So, quick introduction to Snell's law. This is the format that I would like to use. This n i sine r equals n r sine r. I know it's not the one that's in the textbook, but it is more versatile. It allows us to just basically use it for any situation. So, hopefully, that makes sense. Next lesson, we'll do some calculations and take it a bit further.